Energy Minister P. Thyagarajan believes that the China Plus One opportunity has helped the state emerge as India's top exporter of electronic goods. In a conversation with me, the former GST Council member also spoke of the GST Secretariat and said that the system is inefficient and there's a need for urgent reforms. Listen in. It's not uh, in my daily uh, kind of uh, work remit, so I'm not, I, I can't say authoritatively, I'm not keeping track of these things. But I would say that um, broadly the sectors that are doing well in Tamil Nadu, uh, one is electronics assembly uh, and component to some extent, but mostly around assembly. Um, the second is the automotive sector, and in particular, the movement towards e-vehicles. We have, you know, Ola has set up a big factory and uh, so forth. The third is around uh, the textiles, the non-leather shoes, so the, the sneaker industry, if you will. Uh, then is also the leather industry and shoes. So, so I would say these are all areas where we have seen uh, tremendous growth. In, and we've always been a bit strong, but I would say the uh, China plus one strategy or the de-risking of China's concentration has led to a lot of uh, uh, benefits for us. If you know, we went from being the number three or number four state in, a, in manufactured or assembled electronics goods export two, three years ago to number one last year. Uh, much of that is this China shift of things like iPhones moving towards India and in particular Tamil Nadu. Today, India is wanting to emerge as a supplier for the world. If there were one or two key reforms which you feel India needs to attract a higher amount of investments uh, in semiconductors, uh, in manufacturing, with a view to make exports more competitive, what do you think those reforms would be like? What drives investment, and as a former investment banker, what drives investment decisions is not so much the marginal financial, you know, kind of plus or minus. It is about two or three things. It is about reliability. It is about speed. It is about, I don't want to use a cliche like ease of doing business, but the transparency of processes and the ability to plan accordingly and manage your risk accordingly. These are the kinds of things that drive investment decisions. So I would say broadly, the kinds of reforms we need to make is to make it easier for people to access and become aware of our market, of our potential, of the opportunities, uh, provide them better hand-holding and kind of support in their decisions to locate, to acquire land, to do you know the basics of getting things right, and then continuously support them till they get to uh, production and export. Now, uh, speaking about uh, China Plus One, uh, in this term. Will it be a huge priority for the government in Tamil Nadu to ensure that countries and companies looking to diversify or looking for an opportunity uh, to move manufacturing out of China come to Tamil Nadu? Do you think that's going to be priority number one? Yeah, I'm not sure about priority number one, but obviously you have to focus your policies and your uh, kind of efforts on what is imminently kind of uh, likely to yield results, right? Like if you're smart, you pick the wave and ride the wave. So I think, again, I say, though it's not my department, and though I'm not in a kind of more macro role like I used to be, uh, my understanding is that obviously uh, we, have, we already have hugely benefited from the China Plus One, mm -hmm. and I think we'll continue to try to do that. Uh, certainly in my little uh, field of view, which is uh, around innovation, around uh, startups, around IT services. Um, I've already seen that. For example, we have a big US client, I don't want to say the name for, for privacy, a big, um, I mean, no, not a US client, a US company in the media space, one of the biggest. And uh, they have gone from something like 200 jobs uh, a few years ago, four or five years ago, to almost 6,000 jobs in the last five years. Mm -hmm. And I would say, when I spoke to the president of the digital division, uh, he said that almost a thousand of those jobs were jobs that either were in China and moved here mm -hmm. or would have otherwise been placed in China mm -hmm. and were placed in China instead. Mm -hmm. So we are already benefiting from it uh, in, in a big way and clearly we'll try to seize the opportunity because mm -hmm. that's where the macro trend is. There has been a lot of demand for quite a few years now to 
bring down the number of slabs from four to three. Uh, the GOM is looking at the possibility of merging 12% to 18, 12% and 18% uh, tax slabs. Is that something that you feel uh, the time has come for? It is important to do it now. I say this personally. Whatever I thought of the system before I spent two years in it, uh, the two years there tell me that the functioning of the GST Council itself, and this is not, doesn't require a constitutional amendment, doesn't require, I'm saying in the practical way, who sets the agenda, how are the GOMs, you know, uh, uh, constructed, how are the chairmanships set up, what is the secretariat's role, what is the role of the fitment committee or the law committee, yeah. In basic processes, this is a really inefficient, badly designed system. I say this as a former operations research major and, a, and an industrial consultant and a management consultant. Uh, if, if you just ask me to wear my kind of professional hat, this is a really inefficient, badly designed system. It can be easily improved in 20 ways, profoundly and easily improved, easily in terms of effort and profoundly in terms of impact, uh, were the government of India, which is basically the, the kind of, um, you know, home of the GST secretariat. The GST secretariat needs profound reform. Right? That, that's, that's my professional view from two years of experience. There is one thing to expect and aspire to have fewer rates, but is it politically possible right now or do you think we're still far away from a consensus? Do you think it could happen in the next few weeks or it's something that will require more political uh, will? Look, um, in my experience, I, you know, and this is my personal view, it's not the government's view, it's not my government's view. Uh, in my personal experience, whenever the union government has decided that it wants to do something, at least in the last ten plus years, it has gone ahead and done it. Far more momentous things than the collapsing of five rates into three or three rates into two, whatever, have been done by a bill introduced in the morning and voted on in the afternoon. Uh, you know many of the examples. So uh, if the union government decides that that's what they want, my best guess is they can get it done. Time for a quick break, but don't go anywhere. We will be speaking to the French envoy to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development on the other side.